everyone and welcome to this rather spontaneous video about how you can finish a painting. Now, I'm actually on my phone at the moment so sorry if I my head is cut off at the top and also you may if you're a subscriber realize that I am not wearing a wig as I normally do. Unfortunately the wig is taking a little rest right now, a much needed rest I think because I was filming with it a few weeks ago and um, I actually was swimming for about two hours in front of the really hot lights and after a while I not only started to feel my scalp getting extremely hot, although that's quite normal, but actually uh, progressively after the couple of hours I was filming uh, I started to feel like uh, my wig was getting tighter and tighter on my head and when I took it off I had this enormous red mark across my like, forehead area and I actually thought that I'd burnt myself or something, <laughs> so I started to quite freak out about it. Um, fortunately though, the mark disappeared after about an hour or so, it was like an hour of worry, but uh, I actually kind of realised that it was okay, except that I think it's probably not very good for me having that level of um, sort of suffocating <laughs> lack of oxygen around that area. So. For, for the while, uh, we will be letting the wig um, have a rest period and in the meantime, we are stuck with my rather um, almost uh, naked looking head, I'm afraid. But here we are. So here I'm going to show you how I finish painting. I think it's a very difficult situation when you have got to the point where you are quite happy with your work but you're not really sure whether you want to finish it or just keep going. And this is a difficulty, I think, with a lot of artists, certainly a difficulty with me. I don't really know whether to stop or to continue. In this case, I was actually planning to continue uh, to stop before this layer that I've done. So this is like my final layer on the sea. I did a lot of detail. And then I considered doing one more layer over this, so going over the entire thing with a lot of medium and so forth. But I quite like the effect of it, and um, it's got a, a slightly loose feel which I think is okay in, in art. I mean, I personally really like the look of it. I know some people don't particularly, but I think it's okay. I, I quite like the way it's turned out. And so this is a, the story behind this essentially is a mysterious ship and it has been um, used for years and years by its crew and it's very old and tired and it's run by this quite tyrannical uh, pirate <laughs> and it's a pirate ship. Uh, however, one day it decides when the pirate is on shore and he's gone to do something, uh, probably stuff himself with food, uh, he decides, the ship itself decides to break free and to go on the sea by itself and discover some magical land by itself on its own. So it breaks free from its owner <laughs> and its captain and it just goes and it's set, set free if you like. And I love the idea of personifying inanimate objects as the ship is. So it sounds a little bit odd, but if you are somebody who visits my channel regularly, you know that uh, that's the type of thing I like. So <laughs> I hope you like it. And I'm going to basically finish off uh, this area because I don't know whether you can see from there, but close up, it's really weird because I'm on my phone. I don't even know which direction the actual camera is. So it's so confusing to me right now, but um, hopefully my eyes are not wandering around all over the place. So this area is I'm not really done. I kind of just uh, left it as it was and I realised that there are there is some canvas showing through and now you can do that, you can leave the canvas showing through, particularly if you've got a toned canvas, it always looks really beautiful. However, uh, this canvas is not toned and I can see some slight white spaces on there so I just want to cover it really and um, this sky was a lot more just blue, a mix of blue and pink, however I really wanted to add a sunset because I think sunsets in art have such a beautiful quality, particularly when they're reflecting on some kind of, uh, um, what's the word there, the <laughs> like exciting sea, a stormy sea or, or a really active sea, so I think that always looks really interesting and uh, amazing, so you can sort of see the shadows in the distance. So I'm going to start by uh, showing you my palette. Now this is getting considerably rougher and rougher over the, <laughs> over the course of my usage, so it's starting to look pretty manky now. Um, but I'm going to mix these colours here, and I've got a darkish blue, obviously there's my medium here. And what I'm going to do is just uh, lean back here so you can see more of the painting, so you can see my mix here. 
and I'm going to mix in, and I'm going to use a lot of this white. I believe this is cool white. These are all colours by Gavin, essentially. Um, and I think this is the Radiant Turquoise. This is a be just such a beautiful colour. Really, really amazing. You can actually mix this yourself if you have an ordinary blue, and then you just mix it with white. But I just really love the actual tone of this, and it's such a useful colour to have if you love using blues. And I am a blue person. So many of my paintings have a blue theme, and it's been, ever since I started painting, it's been my theme, I think. Pink, green, and purple always was the palette that I use consistently, and I try to break free from it, but sometimes I always end up going back to it, which I don't know whether it's a good thing or not. Uh, but here we go. So I'm going to mix that, and then I'm just going to go into areas that I feel behind the ship are not really covered properly, so it's just to get the sort of a coverage. So it's not um, anything too uh, spectacular at the moment, just trying to fill in those details uh, right here. Um, and I'm hoping to do this quite gently because I don't want to disturb whatever I've created already. I think that's quite important because then otherwise I'll have to go over the entire, the entire thing. I did manage to live stream. My last video was a live stream and I found that the experience was absolutely amazing. However, I did find quite sadly that my the quality of the picture, is that what you say? Quality of the, of the video was terrible. And what happens is, is that for some reason this automatically uploads in 4K and I think that that really appealed to me. However, uh, it actually means that the when you move around, because it's trying to make it so high quality, it actually becomes very jerky and uh, pixelated. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, bit of a disaster and so I'm not sure whether, and it's a bit of a, a sad thing in a way because I've wanted to live stream for such a long time and, um, and you know, I, I got there, but it was terrible. So <laughs> I'm continuing just here. Now, I don't know if you can see, but just coming behind the ship and just creating a very slight colour there, just to make sure that those whitish areas of the canvas are covered. A lot of people, um, a lot of sensible people, and as you know, I'm not sensible at all, uh, a lot of sensible people will do the background first, and so they will um, fill in the entire background of the painting, and then they will then go in with the ship or water, whatever it is, over the top. But I don't do that, because I like to make my life difficult. For some reason, uh, I just start painting, really, um, I don't think I would ever really advise it. I would say planning is the best way to get the best work. But for some reason, I just, I'm so, I don't even know if it's naturally an impatience, but I tend to get the best amount of ideas and flow if I just start painting. Sometimes I won't even sketch up anything. And those times for me have been when I've created some of the best work. Obviously there have been times when I have sketched out an outline and then worked from there, but even then I don't actually sketch the entire piece of uh, the entire canvas. I would just sketch perhaps, I would have just sketched the ship for example, and then the rest of it just do, would do whatever, start to think of ideas as I went along. But everyone, I think every artist is different and I think that's so great. It's amazing, isn't it? You don't really have to follow any kind of rules. You just go with your own, <laughs> which is what's, what's so nice about that. And uh, which is why you could probably think, I'm sure there will be some artists who wouldn't do what I'm doing here, which is essentially just uh, making it up. As I'm, <laughs> I'm not exactly making it up. I think it's um, also to do with a certain amount of practice, because I know... I know what type of look I like and what type of finish I want in the painting. So I do have some direction. It's not that I'm just kind of like putting out any old colours together. I sort of know what uh, tones go together and I also know what tones I want to, what kind of feel I want and mood I want to create in the painting. And I really wanted this uh, dreamy um, look, but I find that that to be the case in most of my work anyway. But I just really wanted it to be 
this mysterious land far away and just that element of paradise and I just love the idea of exploring um, some kind of a utopia out there. <laughs> perhaps it's perhaps it's because I don't. I am very kind of work work cent work centered, if you like. Although I do do a lot of different things during the week, uh, I think that perhaps sometimes I am dreaming of just uh, going to these magical places, but I don't necessarily go to them. So, so perhaps in my mind, that's what I envision to be somewhere of great peace and great joy. Uh, and I do obviously have wonderful experiences in real life, but I think that perhaps the imagination can create uh, this utopia that is almost too good to even be real. And that again is some, another idea that is worth exploring if you're an artist, this otherworldly quality that uh, may not necessarily exist as such, but could perhaps exist if, if the world was, I don't know, I wouldn't say necessarily better, but just if the world was different, let's put it that way. So I'm mixing in a ton of different colours. I wouldn't say there's a particular rhythm to it. It's just how I feel that I want this sky to look a lot more um, dark in this area because we want some contrast. As you can see, you've got the lighter clouds on one side and then the darker ones on the other, and that tends to be the case when you look at the sky. You get all kind of kinds of nuances and different uh, cloud formations which is incredible to look at if you're daydreaming. It's something I do very regularly, something I used to do a lot at school and get in trouble for. <laughs> and you've got this element of the ship, kind of the sea parting and the skies parting. Isn't that uh, the idea when something magical happens? And so just trying to make sure that I don't go too far out of what I've already kind of created before, so I'm not adding any real dramatic difference to how it was. I'm just trying to create this, and I'm using circular motions just to make sure that it looks relatively fluffy. I like a fluffy sky, I just like as I like a fluffy sea as well, <laughs> keeping it all very fluffy. And just going to work this and I have the most incredible colour. I'm just going to show you in a minute. I'm not actually using this at the moment. Um, it's probably one of my favourite colours on earth. And I'm nearly run out of it, which has made me um, almost despair. But I'm going to get a new one very soon because it's obviously quite urgent. Uh, I really like the way that if you see clouds when they go sort of off into the distance and then they almost form this triangular shape. I just think that looks incredible. Sometimes you do get it if you're very lucky uh, in a sunset, you can see it sometimes, but I always, I always get my camera out when you can see an amazing sunset, and I always, when I can rather, and I always run out and, and take a picture, just because I love the way that the clouds form, especially above, like, I really like a pink sky as well. I'm not showing you my pants enough, because as you can see, I'm quite amateur. Still, uh, no matter how many tutorials I've filmed, I still sort of botch these things uh, totally um, without intention, of course. So, just trying to, and I'm nearly done on this guy actually. So, this is how you can finish your painting if you are a little bit um, concerned about. Uh, how to finish it, just fill in all the areas if you haven't done already. Make sure that everything on your canvas looks as well done as the rest, if that, does that makes sense. So if you've spent a lot of time working on the sea, it's sort of, or any, any element in your painting, it's quite easy to neglect the rest of it. And you feel so tired because you've been working on uh, that one element that you neglect the rest of it. So I had actually finished the sea and then the sky was very plain and I just thought, okay, that's it, I'm done now. <laughs> I'm finished, on to the next one. But in actual fact, I think it was a much better idea to work on the sky and to really create 
the energy and the mood that I wanted. And I'm really glad that I did it. Otherwise, um, I think this would look a little bit more dull. It wouldn't look so exciting, you know, and you want to create... If there, I feel like if there's movement in the sky, then there's... I'm sorry, if there's movement in the sea, then movement in the sky can have that, you know, it can have that extra uh, dimension to the painting. And I think I was um, scared also about doing this because when you're at a point where your painting is looking half decent, then it can be a risk to continue. And quite often I would say to people, if you think, if you're happy with the way it looks now, don't do any more. But, <laughs> but sometimes it, it can be a benefit to just carry on and see if you can add that, that new part of the, you can work a little bit more on parts that you have not necessarily worked on. I would say neglected, but not necessarily worked on as much. Um, and we are nearly there. So I'm going to show you this amazing colour. I believe it's manganese blue hue. And it's by Gamblin, and it's one of those colours that is, could, it can actually be sheared to almost total transparency, but you get this really, really small hint of colour. It's incredible, because when you put it with other colours that are more opaque, it shears them out. It has an incredible quality, and I nearly run out of this, but if you are new to painting landscapes and you're, ex you're using Gamblin, this is a colour you need, particularly if you're painting water. So I'm nearly done here and I just want to do one tiny thing which is to pull this back. And I will show you the colour. I have disappeared. Uh, this is, and you can see how unbelievably mashed it is. It is manganese blue hue. And I believe that Gamblin mostly do, particularly in the UK, they mostly do the 37mm. Um, so a lot of colours come in 40mm, but so this is almost the same really, but they don't tend to do them in the 60mm, which is quite often when I buy oil paints, I will buy the 60mm because it's more useful for me because I go through them a lot. However, this is good enough, especially if you want to try the colours, it's a really good idea if you're sort of starting out and you want to try them. Certainly not cheap, but worth every single penny. They are absolutely amazing. And I'm going to show you a little bit of what they look like. This is just hopefully won't all come pouring out because uh, this is my this is my last sort of moment with the colour. But you can see how amazing it looks. I'm just going to mix it with a little bit of medium. I'm just going to see, and you can see how amazingly translucent that looks. It's a shame that my, it was the worst demonstration ever, but you know what I mean. I think that was enough to show you exactly how incredibly beautiful that colour is. So I hope you enjoyed this little demo on how to finish your paintings if you're stuck. Keep going at them if you feel they're not quite there yet. I think the instinct is something that you should trust when you're painting. And also ask people what they think of your work. And if they say, oh, well, I can see the canvas here, or it looks a little bit unfinished on this section, or maybe you need a little bit more dimension here and there. And then uh, you can find out the truth. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you very soon. Take care. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new. And I will see you soon.